If you want to get in this life, you also need to know how to get out of this life. I'll be talking about full-time RV living exit plans next. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. Recently I did a video about how my four and a half years of full-time RV life have changed me so much that I didn't think I could ever live in a house again. And I mentioned that I have an exit plan that does not involve the house. So in this video, I'm gonna talk more about that. But first, I wanna thank you for helping me get closer to my goal. I'm on a mission to hit 100,000 subscribers, so thank you for getting me closer each day. Why would you even want an exit plan if you're doing RV life? Well, I have a camping neighbor, Bill, who just found out he needs major surgery. He canceled all his travel plans and he's beelining back to a house so he can recuperate because major surgery is major surgery. And that's the thing. Life happens to all of us and it's unpredictable. So we don't know if we're going to be faced with health challenges, some kind of illness or injury where we need to recuperate for a long time and where we might feel more comfortable in a house. You might want to be closer to family to help take care of you, or you might have a situation where you're fine, but you have a family member who needs you, so you have to get off the road. There are other reasons too, such as grandkids. I know a lot of people that are like, okay, I'm done with RV life because I wanna be closer to the grandkids. Also, some things just naturally come to an end. I did a video a couple months ago about a friend of mine. She'd been full-timing for three years, and then it just stopped being fun. She was done and she was ready for something new. So an exit plan is really important because it could be unexpected or it could be something that just naturally happens where you realize, hey, I've got to figure out how to get off the road. I met a couple a few years ago in Oregon that had been out on the road just three and a half weeks. They sold everything and then they realized, you know, they just didn't like it. So they had to buy everything all over again, including a house. And here's the thing. If you sell your house and you sell all your stuff, you're just going to get pennies on the dollar for your furniture. Think about all the things you have, your decorations, your wall hangings, your furniture, all your stuff. You can do yard sale after yard sale. You're still going to end up giving most of it away. Way. And like I said, you're just going to get a small fraction of what you paid for it when you go to sell it. And this is important because if you turn right around a year or two later and want to buy everything back, you're going to spend a lot of money. And I can't really talk about exit plans without first talking about creating a good solid entry plan. A good entrance plan will serve you when it's time to exit. Definitely keep your house, maybe rent it out. You want to be absolutely sure before you sell it. Now, my friends Larry and Kathy that I met on the road, they did something really cool. They sold their house to their kids, and then they had backyard access. So they live full-time in their fifth wheel in the backyard of the house they used to own. They have kitchen privileges and laundry privileges, but they're also helping take care of the grandkids. I mean, it's a win-win situation. And yes, they go out and they use that camper and they travel. I've also met couples that have a definite end goal for this life. They decide they're going to be out here for one or two years and they're going to spend that time looking for their new hometown. So they explore the country, they see where they want to go, and then they settle. So if this is what you're going to do, it probably doesn't make sense to sell all your stuff. You'll probably just put it in storage. Now, I love this life. I've been dreaming of it for 26 years. I'm 60 years old and I know this is a physical life. So I need to really take care of my health to make sure that I can do this as long as I can. So I wanna thank today's sponsor for helping me with that. I wanna to talk to you about my mattress because the older that I get, the more health is a concern. You may remember that three years into RV life, I had back surgery and it was actually RV furniture that caused it. I was sitting in an RV chair doing computer work, working on YouTube videos, and it just was causing this pain. So after I had the surgery, which fortunately was a success, I was more concerned with keeping out of pain and keeping my back healthy. So I got an RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. I have the Aurora Lux and it's awesome. Before I got this mattress, I was waking up with like a stiff neck, stiff shoulders, stiff hips and I was sleeping on a not comfortable mattress. All mattresses and RVs are junk. You can spend 400,000 on an RV and still need to replace the mattress. I think that by using this mattress, I'll be able to extend my time out here. So what I like about RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding is they understand RVers. They have the mattress sizes that you find in RVs like King Short and Queen Short, 
and they ship directly to you. I mean, that's awesome. It's free shipping. It comes right to your door and they have a 120 night sleep trial. The mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they're made in the USA. Now it's wonderful to, to be out on the road and to be able to get the mattress shipped to you. It is heavy, so you might wanna have some help getting it in the door, but it's kind of fun to open it and watch it puff up. If you're interested in RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, check it out. Like I said, they have all different sizes and firmness, but don't pay full price. You can use my code and get 25% off. Go to rvmattress.com slash Liz Amazing and put in the coupon code Liz Amazing and you'll save 25%. Well, who knows for sure how long I'll be out here. I mean, everyone in my family lives till their 90s, but that's not a guarantee. So my exit plan is number one, I would travel less. Right now I'm traveling every two to three weeks, every month sometimes. Well, if travel becomes too much for me, I can travel seasonally. Or I could do what my friend Ariel does. I met her in Tucson. She travels twice a year. She has a high altitude place in New Mexico where she summers and then she winters in Tucson. I've heard of other people doing this where they don't even move the camper back and forth between the two places. They have one camper south and one camper north. So that would work too. Now, if it turns out that I can't travel at all, the south of the United States has so many RV retirement communities, and I could live there year round. I would have all the benefits of a community, but still RV focused. So that means I would have activities and games and things to do, social time, connection, that kind of thing. If I'm stationary like that and I need help, it's gonna be a lot easier to find. Let's say things become challenging for me, maybe lifting things or something like that. I could have someone come in and help me with that. If the stairs become too much, I could probably get a ramp built because I'm not moving so it wouldn't matter. Or I could even switch to a wheelchair-friendly camper if it came to that. Honestly, I see this as decades down the line, but I am a planner and I do believe it's important to think about that. Now, there are other exit plan options such as buying vacant land. You could buy that land with the idea that, okay, if I have to stop traveling, here's where I'm gonna be year round. You may have seen a video I did last year about a couple that own land in Nevada and in Florida, and they're completely self-contained. I'm sure their exit plan involves just staying in place in one of those properties and because they have everything right there, and it's just going to be easier as they age to age in place. And I touched on your other options earlier. You could not sell your house. You could decide to keep it and rent it out. You could sell your house and save that money, save that nest egg. You might buy some different property later after you finish RV life. Maybe you'll buy a condo. No matter what you do, I think having that nest egg, having that savings, it's gonna give you that peace of mind just knowing that you have options. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and let me know your exit plan or your entrance plan. I'd love to hear it and any tips that I may have missed. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.